Hogwarts Legacy Previews finally allowed us to gain a deeper insight into the world of Hogwarts. And I specifically say Hogwarts because, aside of our mission, we were not allowed to venture into the open world. But let's be honest, even if it would have been possible to leave Hogwarts, 90% of the players would still have spent their time exploring the interior and exterior walls of the castle. And there is a lot to explore, so let's get into it. Although the official gameplay showcases already revealed big parts of the castle, never before was there the opportunity to explore Hogwarts on your own. As for me, it was especially exciting to see the architecture up close and which parts of the castle connect to each other. Once again we have seen how the developers excel at portraying the sheer magnitude of the Hogwarts castle and the closer you fly up to it, the more you realize just how big this castle actually is. Another welcome discovery was that the animations and interactions of NPCs don't seem to be so stiff and boring after all, which was one of the biggest fears in the previous showcases. But let's break it down. One place that has already been teased in the showcases and we finally got to visit for ourselves is the greenhouse for Herbology, which was really nice to see with all its details. Some players criticized that they weren't able to set the plants on fire with Incendio, However, I'm confused if people really thought they could set parts of Hogwarts on fire. I don't think so. Outside in the courtyard, I was generally impressed with how lively everything appeared. And yes, while sometimes static, the NPCs don't seem to be nearly as bad as a lot of critics from the previous gameplay showcases anticipated them to be. In fact, animations of NPCs seem pretty diverse. We see students tending to the brooms before taking off, practicing spells, or students getting teach the lesson by a professor. The dialogue also changes in response to story events. A person on Reddit even discovered a student getting an angry howler from her mudblood-hating mother. What did I tell you about making friends with muggle-borns? I am highly affronted. You will not associate with this friend anymore. And if I hear from this woman again, I will see to it myself that you don't. Of course, it's also possible that the devs have put some more work into them, since even the facial animations seem to have improved compared to what we've seen before. Although, that could just be my eyes playing a trick on me. I am sure, however, that we will see continuous improvements when it comes to how the students behave and present themselves. And it was also mentioned that this is not the final build of the game, and it isn't running on the day one patch. Once on your broomstick, it certainly may take some time to get used to the controls, but players manage to get control of it rather quickly after flying around for a few minutes. And just how much fun flying can be! Being able to fully and without limits explore Hogwarts to your heart's content and fly up as close as you want to be to places you have previously only heard about in the books or at best seen in the movies will definitely make the day of any Harry Potter fan, such as myself. Seeing the impressive architecture from outside from whichever angle you desire and how all the parts connect to each other truly was a highlight and I am especially excited to explore the exterior walls of Hogwarts at night because as we have seen in the movies, this castle's atmosphere and character delivers at night the most. Just the fact that of everything we are seeing outside, all of it has a life inside as well and we can theoretically go there any time is dramatically contributing to making the game feel immersive and authentic. I am probably using the words immersive, authentic and atmospheric a lot in these videos, but it's just really what comes to mind, and that is by all means a good thing. Everything is interconnected and no matter where you want to go, no loading screen will stop you from doing so. I was very positively surprised by how immersive and atmospheric it felt to fly around the Quidditch field, and while the Quidditch sport is not in the game, not yet at least, I definitely plan on spending a bit of my time just flying around that Quidditch field, again preferably at night. Even though the vast majority of the gameplay we've seen is very promising, it should be noted that there was a good amount of texture and object popping on the PS5 version, which will hopefully be resolved with the day one patch. Personally, I am going to play the game on PC, and I do hope that Avalanche software optimizes the game well and takes advantage of the capabilities of all systems. In Avalanche software's defense though, even a very highly rated game like Elden Ring has a certain amount of texture pop-in, 
This is because it's incredibly hard with current technology to 100% remove texture pop in open world games, since basically no computer is capable of loading all visible assets over large areas. However, there are ways to make texture and object pop in less noticeable. To close this video, my general thoughts on the preview are very positive, and some concerns I had about NPC animation and interaction have subsided. While it is still not clear how the performance on PC systems will turn out to be, the impressions left by the developers have been very promising, so I expect we shall not be greeted by a cyberpunk-like performance once we boot up the game. Hogwarts looks stunning and so does the combat, and I can't wait to explore it truly without limits and finally experience the story they have in store for us. That's it for today guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you later this week.